Alright, and welcome back to part 8 of Elden Ring, the ultimate guide. Now, so we're just heading back to this artist shack. If this is the first time you've watched any of these guides, we recommend you watch the video linked in the description. And if you have any tips of your own, put them in the pinned tips comment, and that way people can also check that out for further helpful advice. Otherwise, though, we are heading to the north half of Lyrnia of the East, so I guess... Or, sorry... The northeast part of Lyurnia the Lakes, rather, and we're going to kill this guy right here because he will drop, specifically him, for whatever reason, he will drop, and it's a pickup as well, so you can miss it, Briar's a Sin, which is an incantation, I'm sure. Uh, sorcery, actually. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, boosted by the Staff of the Guilty, grab the... Fire Spur Me, Gesture There, and Flame Cleanse Me, probably the most important we're going to pick up in this episode. Easily. So um, Flame Cleanse Me is a spell that we are going to be using extensively throughout the rest of the game. It is one of the main reasons why we go to 12, uh, 12 uh, 15 Faith, 12 Arcane, because it is a spell that will cleanse you of your poison and or rot, as well as it does a very tiny amount of fire damage to you, and as a result, it also stops Frostbite, so if you're Frostbitten, it gets rid of that as well. Uh, so it's it is wild that you get all that for 15 faith. It's genuinely incredible. Now, very just quickly, we're gonna run past this uh, kind of this this building hut or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, you might think that looks a little bit familiar. You'd be correct. This is another one of those um, lift type buildings that takes you an underground section. Again, we will go to that later on. Don't worry, we haven't forgot about the one in Limgrave. But we do consider that to be a slightly higher level part, so we're going to be going back to there um, in a later part still. But yeah, otherwise ignore that building for now, because we're not going to be dealing with it. But we did just get a stone sword key, so we're just going to warp back to this grace to save a little bit of time. Now, in that bit that we got the uh, flame cleanse meat, there's enemies called fire monks. And I'm sure you can spot what a fire monk is. There's a whole lot of them around here. Um... Oh, no, apparently we are indeed going to this building to take the lift down. Okay, we're going to take the lift down and so we can warp back to it later. So as we're doing that, the fire monks can drop the fire monks flame mace, the fire monks, uh, or the monks flame blade, um, f and giant conquering hero's grave. Oh, I think you can only get that in the giant conquering hero's grave, is the monks fire blade. But otherwise you can get the monk, the, the hood, the armor, the gauntlets, the greaves, they can drop smoldering butterflies and fire blossom. So if you want the flame mace, that's where you get it. And if you want their fucking drippy armor set, you can just start fucking slaughtering them until you get it. I think we're going to take a little detour now um, and head over to the Carrion study hall. Um, yes. It's worth grabbing the grace here, even if you don't do it now. Um, or do we head down to the lake first? No, it looks like it's going to be the study hall first. So on your way so there, there's a scarab outside with the smithing stone. Yes. Uh, now, next um, to the fire monks, sorry, just to interject, there's the smaller guys, like the one that we got Briars of Sin off of. Um, the fire monks are the ones that have the big white collar. The smaller guys that are hanging about are thorn sorcerers, and they can drop the Staff of the Guilty. But apparently only the ones that are on fire can drop it. According to this note here anyway, so... I didn't know that. I well, thought any of them could drop it. That's cool. Maybe any of them can drop it. I don't know. Maybe there's just a higher chance on the ones in fire, but fuck it. Just so you're aware, that is just a thing that might be a thing. So, all right, there's a scarab. We're going to get that. We got the... We grabbed the grace that was in the study hall. We're not going to do the study hall just now. You can. It is quite easy. However, it's... We have to come back there in a much later episode. Uh, to the point that if you you get almost nothing in the current study hall, so if you just come back later, you can just blast through it with absolutely no issues. Um, so that's that's the take on the study hall. Uh, there's kind of just no point in doing it because you need to do it later. And the little bit of it that you can do, there's fuck all in it. There's literally like four items. So who gives a shit? Just do it later all in one go. So we're grabbing this grace on the shore edge and then we're going to head down south hugging the cliff again kind of like what we've done in the last part where we hugged the cliff in order to get uh, some items that just didn't naturally fit into the progression of this area we're so going to have to do a... that a couple of times in Leonia because uh, it's just so big yeah there's a lot of empty space in Leonia um, grab that the was land, land squirt, squirt ashes. Ashes. Yep. 
Yeah, they uh, inflict poison, they have a lot of health. Um, good versus a couple of bosses if you want to try them out. Uh, they don't move a lot though, so don't try and rely on them. So we're heading back north. I do remember there was an item here that was a little bit tricky to find. So just kind of keep an eye on where we are. We saw the Grace there. So this is kind of west of the Grace. You should be looking for one of the big flowers, like the flower enemies. And there should be an item round about here, or there's another flower enemy that also has an item round about it. Um, as you can see, I'm kind of wandering about, but I didn't want to speed it up. That way that you could specifically see what it is that we're looking for, because it is, I think it's a smith and stone three or four or something like that. So I think this is a another flower enemy that's a little bit more south of the one that we were just at. So just kind of bear that in mind. So now we're going to head back. I think we head back to the Grace to kind of re-ground ourselves in the position that we're in. Um, so yeah, just, just bear in mind that there is a flower with a smith and stone three there. So now we're back at the Grace to re to reground ourselves. We're going to head north. Hugging the cliff edge, and I think there's another gazebo with another smith and... I think it'll be a smith and stone four? Question mark, maybe? I think this one's a three. I think it's a group of threes, actually, if it's the one in the gazebo. Might be three threes or something like that. So um, yeah, there's just, there'll just be a gazebo floating about around here a little bit. Um, if you can believe the other footage wasn't particularly great. Now... There it is, there it is. Uh, now, what we've seen here is uh, three threes, you're right. Oh. Wow, well remembered. So, <laughs> you saw a bunch of dumpy enemies that were walking past. Those are second generation Albinorix, is what they're called. Now, we don't, I don't think we fight any in this part, but they can drop Dirty Chainmail, the Curved Club, the Curved Great Club, the Ripple Crescent Halberd, Albinorix Shield, and um, you don't get their headpiece, you pick it up later on in the game. And despite sometimes wielding the Ripple Blade or the Sham Shear, they don't drop it. You get the Ripple Blade from Pidia, and we've already got the Sham Shear. Now, as I'm sure you've seen, we've walked back to the Round Table Hold, and we're just using our Smith and Stone 3s to upgrade our Katanas. So now we've fully upgraded one Katana through the Smith and Stone 3 uh, upgrade path. We can now upgrade the secondary Katana using our Smith and Stone 3s. So we're not going to upgrade them uh, like one upgrade at a time for each of them. We're going to upgrade one fully and then use re residual Smith and Stones to upgrade the other one. And now we're warping back to Leonie of the, the, Leonie of the Lakes. This was the grace that was near the Fire Monks. Um, yeah, so those wee guys there, those are uh, Thorn Sorcerers. So now we're and just maybe we just rode past there. Yep. is a flame chariot. They hit really hard, they're quite tanky from the front, but you can actually get behind them and backstab the guy piloting it. Aye. And when killed, they drop flame butterflies or fire blossoms. Um, useful source for that early in the game, because you can't get fire blossoms until way later. Now, so those guys that we, the... just, that we just that we walked past were the um, wandering nobles. Uh, we've already discussed what they can drop. Uh, they can just drop um, their, their sets. They all drop like a, a version of the Wonder Noble set and they can drop the weapons that they're holding. So we've already been over them and we'll probably go over them again, but we're coming up to an important NPC. So I don't want to go over um, those guys too much just now. But we picked up the Gold Sewn Needle and the Sewn Needle Kit. That'll become relevant later on. And this is Turtle Pope. He's a great NPC. So, uh, Muriel, the Pester of Vows, is your absolute top pick for sorcery and incantation merchant throughout the entire game. He never moves, he can't die. Um, give him all of your prayer books, all of your scrolls, and you can use him as your general um, stock for sorceries and incantations, because once you've cleared out the inventories of the likes of Selen and Corin. Um, they will move about as part of their quests, and Muriel will not. Correct. So he's very based. He will also, if an NPC is pissed off at you, he will, he's the guy that you can request absolution, right? And they'll stop. So there's a little statue of a Nox Priestess. You can see it over in the distance there. Ah, yes. Um, and you interact with that and use an item called the Celestial Dew. You get a, a bunch of them in the underground areas and a couple above ground. Um, 
and it's not super important, not super relevant, doesn't come up very often, but now you'll notice Turtle Pope is gone, and that's because, yeah. like Banal, another, yep, another Belbearing Hunter. Bell -bearing Bell -bearing Bell -bearing Hunter. Now, again, um, we've already been over these guys. You do exactly what you're doing is the technique. Uh, you put on Golden Vow, you put on your Bubble Shield, you go Ground Slam, Ground Slam, and get your, uh, like, the, the, the stun, Stagger Window. You can get, you can, so as you can see, it's pretty much, you can do that guaranteed, like, Ground Slam, Ground Slam, Counter, Ground Slam, Ground Slam, Counter. And the thing is, is that they do kind of seem to reach a sort of more powered up stage it always seems to be a lot harder getting like just doing that continuously but what you can do is jump up here and kind of do a sort of hybrid method because this guy is for all intents and purposes definitely stronger than any other enemy in this area um he's definitely scaled to be a little bit higher than the, the sort of general um enemy strength in this area but given how good this technique is, we can just pepper him with arrows. Uh, because he did, like, if he hits you, he hits fucking hard. He can very, very easily kill you. But by doing our technique of ground slam, ground slam, counter, ground slam, ground slam, counter, run away, pepper with arrows, he's never going to bother you again. You'll notice, actually, the bow is doing, even without FP, the arrows are doing a decent chunk of damage to it. Yeah, to say... yeah it's not too bad. Like, to say you can carry 100 arrows, well, 99 arrows, well, 200 technically, because you can have two, like, 200 equipped at any given time. Those are doing a decent chunk, like a respectable amount of damage for a plus four bow. And Paying dividends is... once again. Yeah, and now that is how you kill that guy. Just now, again, to reiterate, this is one of those enemies that you may be so inclined to come back and fight later. There is nothing wrong with doing that. Now, he drops, drops the Meat Peddler's Bell Baron. You can give that to, just like any of the other Bell Barons in the game, give that to the Twin Maiden Husks in Round Table, and she'll sell a bunch of meat-related items. Lump of flesh, sliver of meat, things like that. But um, just to quickly reiterate again, if, an en if, a, if you piss off an NPC and they either stop talking to you or start attacking you, you can take a Celestial Do to that statue, and that will, uh, like, reset their aggro or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, so that's kind of... So I guess, like, even though Muriel can't die, um, that's kind of... I would lump those functions in together, personally. So it's now... It's all Church of Vows stuff. Yes, yes. Uh, so now we are heading uh, further north, up the beaten path. Now, there's a kind of statue there, and the, and the road splits. We're going to, first of all, take the right-hand split. Uh, there's also... I don't think there's any items to pick up whatsoever there's a whole bunch of crafting flowers and shit so just be spamming triangle and running over anything that's bright but otherwise uh there's a rune bear here don't fight it don't fight these things if you don't have to uh or... some guy was saying that you can just block their attacks i don't remember ever being able to just block their attacks because they attack so quickly they just annihilate all your stamina and then you get put into that kind of I don't have any stamina left mode, and then they just hit you for more damage. That, that's my experience. I don't know. Um, I mean, he's not wrong. You can block their damage and fight back. It's just... Why? It's an overworld enemy. Just run away from it. Also true. Well, there's some that you have to fight, I guess. But otherwise, this guy is a mausoleum knight. Now, there's a bunch of these. Um... The Mausoleum Knights specifically can drop the Mausoleum Knight armor, not the helmet, because he doesn't have a head. <laughs> but he dropped the Knight's Great Sword, the Partisan, the Great Bow, Eclipse Crest, Great Shield, and Great Arrows. Um, so they are very much similar, like the real Lucaria soldiers or the Godric soldiers. They are an equivalent kind of thing like that in terms of the Knight version. There's three, there's three tiers, the Foot Soldiers, the Soldiers, the Knights, and they are the Mausoleum version of the knights i guess so, their unique gimmick is uh they have a kind of short range teleport similar to yes. how some of the spirit ashes behave um and it makes them sort of tricky to to keep a handle on now we're in the black knife catacombs here and a skeleton dungeon primarily so sacred blade goes on stops them regenerating and it does a bunch um, of extra damage to them because the skeletons are also weak to the holy damage that sacred blade gives you 
So yeah, Sacred Blade is just it's uh it's a must pick up. Now this is a, a kind of important dungeon in the game actually because this is tied to Fia's quest. I think. Yeah. It, no, right. you're right. You're right. Um, there's there's a secret extra boss in this particular catacomb. Um, it's a black knife assassin, and killing it gives you the black knife print item, which okay. uh, allows you to progress fear, Roger, and I guess Jesus. to a slightly lesser extent, Rani's quest. Uh, and D. And D. You know that's that's true. I do like that the NPC quests are all fair, fairly intertwined. Um, in Elden Ring, it does it doesn't make it it does make it feel that all the NPCs have like some kind of agenda going on and the shit that they are doing affects other NPCs. It's kind of cool. Uh, more yeah, so it's than nice to know that we're games. not the main character in many respects. <laughs> yeah. So uh, a cool thing that you can do is these fallen um, blades. I guess you can jump on top of them and kind of use them as a little lift to get up here. Um, now that becomes a lot less cool the more times they do that during the game but it's very um it's a, definitely a big novelty at this point now specifically actually you want to take a wide angle around this corner because that fucking skeleton there with the gross messer will all like the amount like every time i was when i was doing this in testing like oh it's fine i'm i'm, I'm wide angled enough it won't hit me and it fucking hit me every time so go hug that fucking wall all right now the skeletons can drop the um the scimitar the scripture wooden shield, and the, the ones with the big curved sword can drop the gross messer, and they also drop the longbow. That's irrelevant. Now, you can summon D at this point. I think you can summon D no matter what, so you don't even need to have ever spoken to him for his summon site to be here. I think. Ignore as that. As long Steam as you haven't killed him, he will be here. Yes. Now he's actually very, very useful for this boss fight. I will say, um, he's actually pretty good, and. Um, now, if you, for whatever reason, I don't think you can't summon the imps for this boss. No, I you can't. Think. You're right. Um, so, for some reason, you can't actually summon for this boss, but you can summon D. So, don't kill D, I guess. Um, the Black <laughs> Knife Assassins are actually, I mean, you can see we're doing very little damage to it, actually. And they're one of the few enemies in the game where Ground Slam actually isn't particularly good because they jump about so much that it's uh, quite hard to hit them. Now, we do inflict bleed, though, so if we can build its bleed up enough, we can indeed bleed it out for extra damage. Uh, but otherwise, we are just going to use D to kind of split aggro and get our hits in while we can. Fighting these things one-on-one -on -one is a fucking pain. However, Bloody Slash, actually decent. That's like that's a solid chunk of damage that Bloody Slash is doing. However, the Black Knife Assassins can hit you with uh, that Destined Death attack, that kind of red beam that will just uh, drain a whole bunch of your fucking health. So you want to try and stay as high HP as you can when fighting these things. Now we get the Assassin Cerulean Dagger and the Black Knife Print. And it's not impossible, it's not the hardest boss ever, but it is one of the trickier bosses that we'll have fought up to this point in the game. So just bear that in mind. So dropping down here, we can now open the door to the actual boss of this area. And um, pick up a ghost glove warp. And uh, this guy wants to party, but we're not letting him. Sacred Blade is kind of a no fun allowed ash for skeletons, to be honest. Yeah. Um, no, no, like a couple really, of giant does. grabs are going to come out of the floor here. Um, these things, they look scary, but if you've played Dark Souls 3, you know exactly how they behave. Um, they're not that intimidating, all told, they don't have a ton of health, they can hit each other, so if you can stack them on top of each other, as you can see there, one of them's getting wailed on, just for existing. Ground Slam um, is actually shockingly good against them, I've noticed. Uh, frankly, everything is. They, sure. They're nowhere near as intimidating as their lobster cousins. Ugh, yeah. But you'll see how, how bad they get um, a little bit later on. So here we are back in that fallen blades room so if essentially we've done like one big circular journey all the way around and um yeah that's uh that's it now we're on to the boss i want to say this boss is a spectral shade i think you're right but i think this is the one that has skeletons in the room with it 
Now, we can summon the imps for this boss, however. So, now, you could go and cemetery trade, rather. That's what I meant. However, well done. I know, it's me. one. Great. <laughs> Now, uh, if you remember, what you want to do is, uh, particularly with Sacred Blade, just keep your distance and just chuck a fucking Sacred Blade at it. <laughs> just look at the de it, Yeah, you just make this boss into a joke with Sacred Blade. <laughs> look at it. That's why God. we didn't go back and, and heal up. Um, because you just need to hit it with Sacred Blade and it just fucking dies. Now, be aware of those, those fucking things that they get close to you. They can bleed you out like that. So be very aware. Um, but if you can keep your distance, hit them with Sacred Blade, you're all good. Now we're warping back to Garank because we did just get a Death Root. And now we're going to give him that Death Root. Uh, we've actually got two on us because we got one from the uh, Mariner. We'll get Bestial Vitality, which is a spell or an incantation. It's an incantation that gives you a, a little bit of health regen. Just enough to be okay. Because it's so cheap, it's good. Yeah, we also got Bestial Roar as well. So, back so to deep. the round table hold, and here we are with Roger. Now we can give him the Black Knife print, so as we said, that is a pretty important dungeon to do. Uh, we give him that, and just, uh, that's it for the now. Is it now we go see Fear, or does that come later? Nah, that's later, that's later, I'm sure. But we are going to warp back to the round table hold, and um, now that he's... Find out uh, what he had to say about it. Yeah. Was truly, but if Rani, then she should, I would like you to so just exhaust his dialogue just now. He's mentioned something about Rani. I'm afraid, you know of the very and just ideas, keep exhausting no his dialogue until he has uh, stopped talking. Yes, and then that's sure, how we can progress this part of the quest. If Luna, then she should, you be You'll notice like options for dialogue if will appear and disappear in that menu. Um, once no new ones are appearing or all the Unique options have disappeared, you know you're done, yeah. um, and you can move on to other things. So we're going to memorize some spells just now, because now the spell has become relevant. We've got our 15 Faith, 12 Arcane, we've got Flame Cleanse Me, so we can just stick on... I mean, Flame Cleanse Me is the main one, and then it's just spells to taste, whatever you fancy. But um, the, the most relevant ones, I guess, were Bestial Vitality for a little bit of extra healing, and uh, Poison Armament, so... Fuck it. We've got a poison. We can take that. That's fine to just have. But again, whatever you want to play about with, um, we would just highly recommend Flame Cleanse Me because it's so, so good. The other stuff, just whatever you like. But now we're heading back up this woodland path and we're going to head back to that statue bit. And now we're going to be taking the left-hand side path instead of the right-hand side. Aye. There's a couple of items to grab in this area, but not in this specific part of yeah, this, this left-hand path. This whole bit of this area is very barren of uh, any real items, to be honest. I mean, there's I a couple, there's a... but given how big it is, there's, there's like a shield and a talisman, I think it's like that. There's the Frenzy Flame Stones, um, similar to the Warming Stones, except they inflict Frenzy on you, unless you're going for a particular ending, but we'll talk about that when it becomes relevant. Ooh, got a headshot there off one of the Ancestral Followers. Speaking yeah, so of, do you have their these drops? Guys, I do. Yeah, so the Ancestral Followers can drop the Jawbone Axe, the Fur Raiment and Fur Leggings, the Great Horned Hammer, Dwelling Arrows, the Great Horned Headband, uh, which I think we get later on. There's one that guarantee drops it. And then Thin Beast Bones and the Budding Horn. Now, the one we get later on is the Shining Horned Headband. Ah, Never mind then. So, yeah, the Great Horn Headband, I guess, is one that some of them can drop. So, drop it down here to the um, the statue. In front of it is a Frenzy Flamestone. Now, also, we equipped the uh, the Dragon Communion Seal. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yes. So, we, we equip that. That will allow us to actually cast Flame Cleanse Me. So, uh, here we are. Wandering so Mausoleum here. Yes. Uh, now, again, to reiterate, as we... You should be watching the guide in its entirety. We don't want to keep going over the same information over and over again. So there's a spiral horn shield, but in terms of the wandering mausoleums, you can hit their hit, hit their legs, knock off the little skull things, do that enough, eventually they'll land on the ground, and you can duplicate uh, remembrances that you have used. Uh, so you don't have to have used it to duplicate it, 
but if you have a remembrance or had a remembrance, you can duplicate it. Now, uh, we're getting this extra grace. Sorry for the bit of weird editing there, but we did. This is one item that we did inadvertently miss. So we are running down here, and this kind of rocky structure to our left hand side, I suppose. We're just kind of kind of follow it around, and then there's a little hole that we can go through. And I can't remember what this is. A lot horn charm. There we go. How the f fucking hell? Now this gives you something, something in resistance. It, it, it boosts a stat of some sort. Laden frost. I think. I never okay. use it, so I don't really remember specifically what that one does. But you get a stronger version of it later. Oh, it might be the rot one actually. No, that's immunizer. You're right. Okay, so moving on, uh, past uh, going up the hill, uh, past the Wander Mausoleum. There is a scarab up here. Um, I think this drops a somber stone. It's it's quite hidden in this bush, actually, so just uh, keep an eye out for it. Um, if you are struggling to find one, by the way, they do make um, a little sound. Like, yeah, it's a very like a distinctive noise. sound, so it kind of gives them away. Um, so, uh, Uh, yeah, so th it's this fucking... So just also quickly to reiterate, these wandering mausoleums. If they have a bell, they can duplicate remembrances of shard bearers. If they don't have a bell, they can't. It's... Just fucking Google it, right? So, yeah, bit of a cut here, because now we are about to do another air tree avatar. Now, um... This guy kind of kicked her shit in, but I just kept fucking up. These guys are easy. I'm just very bad, okay? But what we want to do is we want to put on our physic, we want to hit Golden Vow. You can indeed summon for them, but I think that actually makes it a little bit... I mean, not harder, but less predictable. We are going to... Yeah, because on... it'll be changing its angle of attack. Yes. Um, it'll be trying to attack you, attack your Ash. Um, this attack, it'll summon a bunch of beams. You want to just keep moving. Yes. Um, you can roll, you can run, as long as you're a certain distance away from it and you're constantly moving, they should never ever hit you. It might cliff you every now and again, but it won't be anything significant. So, charge attacks, um, the bubble shield saving you from taking damage there, but it gives you so many windows to attack it. In this instance, just roll, as long as you um, time the roll right, the AoE can't hit you. Yeah, um, so you can't take the repost there because you're slightly too low. <laughs> yeah, so this is quite a bit. The, the the ground is very uneven, so it does make fighting this thing particularly a little bit harder. Um, so for its attacks, I do find that they are easy to roll, easier to roll into. When it comes to the ass slam attack, again, if you're gonna have an easier time if you're on a flat piece of ground. For for this and all the other avatars, you want to roll into it. Because it does look that if you rolled into it, you'd be under it by the time the roll finished and it would just land on top of you. That's not true. When it jumps up, there's still a, a hitbox that you can't get through. So when you roll into it, you'll kind of roll in and around it and you'll be facing its back as you do it. Uh, so this one is a little bit more awkward. Now, another technique that we did see a guy mentioned in the comments is that, again, they're very, very weak to fire. So what you can do is just make a whole bunch of fire pots and just chuck them at it. That is a, a strategy. I'm not sure how much damage a fire pot does do against them, but um, we have been told that that is something you can do. Now, this is a little bit of um, forbidden knowledge that you're really not supposed to be able to do. If you can get up to this little bit of ground here, you can just skip a whole bunch, not a whole bunch, but quite a large amount of Lyurnia and go straight to Lyurnia North by jumping straight across here and now you are at the uh, frenzy flame village now i was fucking bl i genuinely didn't think that you you could you could get here this early in the game um but this just saves you going all the way around you can indeed just come straight here now there's a big glowing sun thing that will um inflict frenzy on you if it's like got a line of sight at you uh, but as this is mega sequence breaking, we did want to mention it that you can do it, but otherwise we're not incorporating it into the guide because it's also a pain in the ass, and you might just actually get to a point where you're like, "Fuck this, I can't be arsed doing it" because it, is, it took me like half an hour to get like find a way of getting onto that fucking little stump thing. So 
But it is cool that that is something you can do. It's very cool. So, we are heading west now, and this is like kind of the most north bit you can conventionally get to. And on the edge of the cliff, there's a bunch of gravestones that let you uh, just drop down. Now, you can indeed, I, I guess, like as much as it is a shortcut, it's not a, it's not an insane shortcut because the bit that you drop down to, if you follow that path all the way up, which we do later on, but if you come, if you, if you drop down to this bit here, um, you can actually follow this path all the way up to the frenzied village, the bit that we just uh, shortcutted to anyway. So it's, you're not really saving that much time by doing it, uh, to be honest. But we are going to save this bit for later and drop even further down to the lake part of Leonia the Lakes. You'll notice there there was a, another wandering mausoleum sort of at the bottom of this cliff. Um, yes. To get onto this one, the way I found was best to do it was to be on these upper gravestones because it does wander back and forth in this area, as the name suggests. And it will reach a point where it's underneath you. Um, it takes a bit of time, but once it's underneath you, you can jump to it very easily, no issues. You don't have to fiddle about with the intended method, which is using a spirit spring to land on top of it. So we're picking up a spit, somber smith in stone three. Um, and there's also a scarab here, and it's in a bit of an awkward area, so we're going to use a bow, I think. Um, it's one of yeah, the, it's one it's of the one teleporting of the... scarabs. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, when it Field comes to the one drops. Ah, oh, bastard! I think I think we. So if this happens, you can. Um... Oh yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't tell. It just teleports away. It doesn't teleport gone. So um, it just moved away a little bit, and we can still use the uh, the bow to get it. And then there is a another grace here. Now, when it comes to the wandering mausoleums, I think just to make sure, just so you can tell people, not all of them react to you hitting their legs so the implication here was you can't make this one sit down by hitting its legs is that correct oh sure yeah that is true hence why um, you have to use the spirit spring to jump on top of it or indeed use the gravestones so we just popped a, a little soul there because we were close to leveling up so we don't want to use all our souls we can just use one of them and then uh level up and then still keep our souls for later on and now we are heading to the, um, probably the most important catacomb in this area. Yeah, this coming up is the Relicaria Crystal Tunnel. Yeah, I mean, if I you look believe. closely at that, um, at that one from Mausoleum, it doesn't have any skulls on its legs. Yeah, they're actually on top of it, so you need to use either the spring or the gravestones to get on top of it, break the skulls that are on top of it and then it will sit down, like all the others will. Now, I will admit we don't do that, but look for the Spirit Spring in this area, or the Gravestones, get on top of it, yada yada. I'm sure you can work that out, you're not five. Unless you are five, <laughs> in which case, good for you? <laughs> so, we're just taking that, like, side path. If you are, you shouldn't be watching this. What yeah, you what the... If you're five, what the fuck is going on, right? Um... Call CPS or something. But also your parents got yelled in ring, so based? Question mark? Yeah. Anyway, we're in Later Carry Crystal <laughs> Tunnel and we are uh, this is extremely important because there is a bell bearing in this area that will let you buy Smith and Stone one and twos. I don't think threes. No, just one and two. But this means that we can now play about with more weapons at this point, you know, we can at least get get weapons to a kind of basic usable ish level without having to go scavenging for smith and stones it basically means you can get any normal weapon to plus six instantly yes. by giving the bell bearing over to the twin maiden husks and then buying the 12 smithing stone ones and 12 smithing stone twos required to get it to plus six now i had no idea there was a somber smith and stone three behind there that was you that told me that Blew really? my fucking mind. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So in this place, there are the Glintstone Miners. This is one of them. We've killed a few of them. These guys can drop the Digger Staff, the Somber Smith and Stones, Glintstone Scraps, large Glintstone Scraps, right? They are weak to um, stabbing attacks, I guess. Blunt attacks. Strike. Strikes, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, now, there's the marionette soldiers in here, actually. And I think this is the first time we encounter marionette soldiers. They can drop the marionette soldier helm, marionette soldier armor, the spiked spear, the short bows, and cuckoo glintstones. Um, I think that might be the first place we can actually get a short bow. Don't quote me on that, though. Probably that's incorrect. Now, you this can bit buy is. buy one from a merchant. Sure, pro probably. So, this bit is an absolute fucking pain in the ass. I die so many times trying to do this jump. It's just totally not worth it. And, uh, yeah, so that was one death. You do get a little glimpse of the boss, actually, down there at the bottom. <laughs> do I make it this time? I don't think I do. Oh, I guess I do make it this time. I must have cut out the other deaths. So I just want to make a point that you... This is the worst jumping bit in the entire game, in my, ex in my experience. But you do oh, get you a do Smith get a and Stone 3. Stone 3 out of it. Uh, woo! Yeah. Now, there's also battle mages in this place, apparently. Uh, they can drop the Stone Club, uh, Somber Smith and Stones, and... The... However, the... there is one battle mage in the game that drops the entire set, of, like the entire battle mage set. Uh, we will get that later on. But just uh, in case you think that, oh, this thing's got drippy armor, I want it. Don't worry, you get all of it later on. But that's it for drops for this area. Uh, I think everything has been fairly self-explanatory in what we're doing here. Now, this is a uh, glint, like one of the, like the magic glintstone miners. And I don't actually have any drops for that. It's possible I missed that. I don't know if they drop anything specific. But they must. I think right? they drop the same thing as the other miners. Um, well, the I don't think staff. they're any different. They, yeah, they can drop the bigger staff. It's what they're wielding. See? Oh, okay. I guess it must um, just be the same thing. But... Yeah, they just have slightly different attacks because the the little pouch on their back is full of cuckoo glintstones, so they can use those against you. Um, and those little magic projectiles don't look like they do that much, but they can really hurt if there's multiple doing it to you at the same time. Yeah, so... yeah, they do kind of stack up a little bit. Some, just uh, puts Smith a lot of pressure piece. on you. And now under here, yeah, there's, there's even more. So there's, like, there's a lot of upgrade materials in this area as well. So not only are you getting the Bell Baron, you're also getting a ton of Smith and Stone threes. So by this point, you probably have enough to have your um, both your katanas like leveled up the full Smith and Stone three. Um, All the way up to plus nine. Yeah. Yeah. So again, Once again, we're... sending the lift down. Yep. Going and around the we'll... outside, and this one sp actually has a reason for doing this because there is a, a means of getting to a platform that would be otherwise inaccessible to you if you rode the lift down. Correct. Correct. Um, so, there, so there's a Somersmith Smith and Stone two down here, and that is pretty much it for that. God, you. I mean, you've got fucking like Somersmith Smith and Stone twos are your fucking ass by this point in the game, honestly. Why can't I hold all these Somber Smith and Stone 2s? <laughs> My cup overfloweth. <laughs> yeah. But have you not seen the meme where the guy's like, why can't I hold all these limes? <laughs> I don't think I have, but now I need to see it. Uh, so it's like it's like one of those like Getty images or like a stock photo, and it's just a guy and he's just like holding a ton of limes, but he, but he can't! There's so many of them! Oh! <laughs> I don't know why somebody needed specifically a shot of stock image of somebody holding a ton of limes at once. <laughs> I know. But was it was it generic white guy in a business suit? Uh, holding no, it was, so many uh, limes. It's kind of like Facebook employee mixed race guy. This is the only way I could describe. It. Ah, sure. <laughs> the other category of shot of stock <laughs> male. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so <laughs> again, we're just making our way through this. Uh, and that is the shortcut back to the top of uh, this cave. Now, this is actually one of the few interesting layout caves, in my opinion. Now, this is the Marion. Yeah, there's a lot down here. Yeah, um, this is uh, definitely the way it's laid out. The big there's like one big main shaft or whatever. It's kind of semi interesting. I mean, you can tell it's made out of all the same assets. But if there was only one of these in the entire game, you'd go. That was kind of interesting. But as there's many of these in the entire game, you go, that one was less bad than the others. Weird how that happens, isn't it? It's slightly better than absolute vanilla flavoured. Aye, aye. <laughs> Although I, I, I like vanilla flavoured. 
I mean, it's vanilla flavored compared to literally just eating a chunk of ice. <laughs> sure. <Like. laughs> so yeah, I mean, there's quite a lot of just like just hitting the enemy and opening the chest in this particular area. Because pretty much all the all the items aside from the crystal knife, which you can comment on, but like pretty much everything is just smithing stones that you're picking up. Not much to say about the crystal knife. It's just bad. Don't use it. And there we go. So <laughs> uh, there's even more of like the the, the miners down here. Um, this one is slightly bigger. Um, yeah, it is a little bigger. bigger though. Um, a few of those pop up throughout the game. Um, one of them is a is actually an ambush in the cave we got teleported to in Caled in the first part. So you know, fucking ass slam, just paying its dues, and we're just picking up a, bu a bunch more smithing stones. So that's somber smithing stone one. Don't know why the fuck they're giving us one of them currently, but whatever. And uh, then as a again, so many more smithing stone threes. So yeah, you'll definitely will upgrade your katana by the end of this part. So there's um, Shatter Earth, which is actually the spell that the magic miners use. Yeah, it creates the little magic shockwave. It's quite strong, but later you get an upgraded version of it. You get Rock Blaster. Um, it's one of those where you've got Glintstone, uh, like Glintstone Shard and Great Glintstone Shard. And once you yeah. get the Great one, there's no reason to use the lower level one. Not really. Um... Not bad, does decent damage, boosted by the digger's staff by 20%, so that's cool. If you stack two of them, that buff stacks multiplicatively. Cool, so um, if you have one in each hand. Yeah. So, now we're doing the boss, and I think this is Chris a Crystallion? Correct me yes. if I'm wrong? Right. This is easily one of the easiest things in the entire game, because Aslam completely fucks it. So these things have like a really high defense against everything except, like, blunt damage. Aslam is all blunt damage. Um, so, uh, it's just quite a funny There visual. it is, and there it goes. <laughs> yeah, so it does it. it literally doesn't even mark, just put on anything and just start Aslamming it, because you hit it a bunch of times, when you break its poise, or whatever, it's like, kind of armor shatters off, and then it just starts taking, like, normal damage from anything. So just Aslam it, and then just hit it. I, there's nothing else to say about it. Fuck him. It's barely even a boss, it's barely even an enemy. And that is, uh, we're leveling up a little bit more. And that is Leonia the Lakes East. So that's all of it. And that is our build. And okay, there we go, that's Leonia East done. Join us in part 9, where we're going to be doing Leonia South. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.